This video is about using strike lines to determine the strike and dip of beds. So what we have here is a geologic map where the units are indicated by symbol. So we've got units A, B, C, D, E, and F. And we also have topography. So um, these dashed lines in here are your topographic contours. We've got 800, 900, 1,000, and then it's going to start going uphill over here, so 1,000 and 1,100. You've got a little valley here, and you go back up to 1,000 and then 1,100. And then down here, we start to go downhill. So we have 900, then 800, 700, 600. If you're familiar with the rule of Vs, you can see that here we've got a V pointing up and then this V is pointing up. I don't really, I don't really go by rules, but what I can see here is that I'm going downhill and that that downhill is kind of tucked in right here. So if I imagine trying to hike up, I could hike up here through my uh, different elevations and then I could hike up here or hike up here. So either way, I'm going uphill but this one I'm kind of going into a divot. So this is where you would have a valley. All right, so that gives us a little bit about the topography. Let's say that you are tasked with finding the strike and dip of the contacts between D and C. So what you want to do, if you're gonna use the strike line method, is you're gonna try and create at least two strikes or strike lines so that you can then measure a true dip. So here's the idea behind um, a strike line. Okay. Let's say that we're dealing with this front surface. And we wanna know the strike and dip of that surface. Well, any two um, lines define a plane unless they're parallel and then you need a third line that's not parallel to those two lines. So what we do is we find two lines that are horizontal within the plane and any horizontal line is defined as well, with the, I'm so sorry a horizontal line in a plane defines the direction of strike. So there's some horizontal plane that intersects this surface along that line, and there's some other horizontal plane that intersects the surface along this line. <clears throat> and we could do this for as many elevations as we have information about. So let's say, for example, that this is the 1,000 meter strike line. <clears throat> if we go downhill, this one might be the 900 meter strike line. We could go downhill again. Here's where uh, a plane with an elevation of 800 meters intersects that surface. And so we get a series of what we call strike lines. All right. Now, between those two strike lines, we have dip, and dip lies 90 degrees to strike. So if I came up here and I was just trying to draw in a strike and dip, I could go from this strike line down to the 900 strike line at a 90 degree angle, and the direction of this line would define my direction of dip, and the amount that that line went downhill um, that would define my true dip because true dip is perpendicular to strike. So this kind of gives us an idea of what method we might be using, that we need two strike lines, we can draw in some, some dip direction, and then we can use that to make a little triangle. So here our triangle is going to be a right triangle where the, the height of the triangle is going to be the difference in the height of the strike lines. 
and this distance is going to be the horizontal distance between strike lines. If we do that, then our goal is to find true dip. And that's how we would measure true dip at the surface. This line and this line are parallel. So this down here becomes our true dip. And we can use tangent and inverse tangent to calculate that. So let's go ahead and try it in this drawing. So here again, we're looking for the contact between D and C. All right. So what we need to do is find a place where we can locate an exact elevation along those contacts. And to make a line, we need two points. so that we can connect the straight line between those points. Two lines for the 1,000 and two lines for the 900 strike lines. So let's find the contour interval of 1,000. So here's a 1,000. We're going to march along that line until we find the intersection or the contact between unit D and unit C and put a point. And then we can keep looking. So over here, here's the contact. Right here, we cross that 1,000 uh, dashed line again. And then let's see if we can find the two points for the 900. So we go along the 900. Here we find a point going. Here we find a point. So now we have four points. So let's make two lines out of those. Let's make the 1000 strike line and the 900 strike line. Okay. This is the 1000. And the, that one is the 900. All right. So what you might be thinking to yourself, uh, what I guess I would be, is this line is not on that contact. Like if I go right here in the field, I'm going to be in unit C, not in unit D. So how can I really say that that's the strike of unit D, or the contact between C and D? Well, notice that D um, is above, stratigraphically, is above C. Okay, it's, it's uphill from C. We don't have any evidence of anything overturning. <clears throat> These are symbologies for sedimentary rocks. So D is, is uphill from C. So it stratigraphically lies above C. So, <clears throat> so what might be happening is that D was here, but it's eroded away. Okay, so we are still going to use this as the strike line that describes the boundary between C and D. Same thing if we if we kept going, all right, if we kept going through here, um, we would no longer be, if we got over here, we would not be at an elevation of 900 anymore. We would be above 900, but this strike line would almost be a, in an imaginary sense continuing underneath that elevation. All right, the direction of either of these lines is the direction of strike. So first, if you were asked to determine the direction of strike, of that contact, I would first expect you, once you have this line, to draw in a line that's straight vertical, assuming that straight vertical is north, or straight up is north. And then measure that angle between your strike line and 
north. Here, it, it looks like it might be one degree. I mean, these are just very, um, very north-south striking units. So I'm going to say my direction of strike is zero, zero, one degree. You could also write north, zero, one degrees east. And now let's find our dip amount and dip direction. So the next thing we had done over here was we drew in a line that was perpendicular to strike. Um, that connected these two strike lines. So let's do that. All right, this line is perpendicular. And then we're going to use this to make this little triangle right over here. The difference in height between those two strike lines, 1,000 minus 900, was 100 meters. And now we're going to need a scale to find the horizontal distance. So I'm going to come up here to my scale. And I'm going to find, I'm using a ruler with inches on it because I could not find my centimeter ruler today. And I get 13 sixteenths of an inch is uh, 500 meters. I'm going to go ahead and divide this by 13 so that I know what 1 16th of an inch is in meters. So 500 divided by 13 is about 38, it's a little more, 38.5 meters. And now I'm going to measure this horizontal distance between these two sides of the strike line. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 sixteenths of an inch. So we're going to do 38.5 times 14. And that is 538.5 meters. All right, so the horizontal distance between those two strike lines is 538.5 meters. And now we can use tangent to find that angle, which is our true dip. Okay, so tangent of the true dip that we want is equal to opposite over adjacent, so 100 meters over 538.5 meters. And now we're going to have to use inverse tangent to get that angle back. If you're going to use your calculator for this, make sure that you are set for your answer to come out in degrees. Otherwise, you're going to have a really tiny angle. And I get 10.5 degrees. So now I have a direction of strike. I have a dip amount. A dip amount is 10.5 degrees. And now I just need a dip direction. So if you're striking north-south, your options for a dip are east or to the west. And here we can say that this is 1,000, this is 900, so it's going downhill to the east. Dip direction is to the east. So if you were asked for strike and dip of the contact between D and C, the way that you would write your answer, um, let's say you're using quadrant notation, would be north, 01, east, 10.5 degrees east. So that would be your final answer on this one. All right. Thank you. Bye.